Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So this is part two of useful things to share from this latest um, After Effects reproduction done in Apple Motion 5. So this is the logo sting that we reproduced and this was from Nerdsy and there's a link in the description to check out that designer's product page at the Envato Market. You can see the original or check out the previous posts which has them side by side. So in part one we looked at this 3D element um, which was done with replicators and we looked at that. So for this part two we're going to look at these um, particles here. If I just turn off all the other groups. So we can see that they are popping scale over life. They grow and shrink back to zero. Uh, and that's what we'll look at doing for this one. So I'll jump over to a new project and we can see how that's done. Okay, so I'm here in a new project. It's just, what is it, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames a second for 10 seconds. So I have this rectangle here. I've just made it into an emitter and it's sitting over here at the side. The emitter is set to point, emission angle and range are at zero and birth rate is set to 1, and life is at 1, and speed is at 1500. So for now we just have this emitter spitting out particles. Okay, so to get scale variation over the life of the particle, we want to grab the, from behaviors menu, particles, scale over life. So we have natural scale, rate, birth and death values, and custom. Um, natural scale and birth and death values look similar. I'll put a link in the description to the motion support pages. You can read about the difference there. We'll just stick with natural scale for now. So you see you've got a, a birth value, a zero, and a scale at death, a hundred. So over the duration, one second, you can see that it grows from zero to a hundred before expiring there. So that's where we start from, but we want the scale to pop over time, so to get larger and then back to zero. So for that we're going to use custom scale. Okay, let's open up the options here. So we get a speed graph and this, is, this represents the life of the particle. So whatever we have set in here is represented in here. So if we grab this point you'll see that it's a scale value and this is the first frame that's at zero. If we grab this point that's the last frame of life and that's at 100. So what we want to do then is double click to add a point and you don't just want to drag it because then you're going to split up the X and Y. So let's drag to select it and we can adjust it. Let's set this value here to 120 and then we want to grab the last frame and set that back to zero. Okay, so now we have something like this. And you'll note that when we do this, the emitter uh, shows particles like mm, a frame too early or something like that. I'm not sure why that happens in motion, but if it's in a project, what I do then is I just grab the emitter and keyframe the opacity from 0 to 100 in the first frame, which solves that problem. You know, you might not want it showing up in your project a frame too early. Okay, but we can just undo that. So back in scale over life, you can drag to select and then do whatever you want, just like you would in the keyframe editor. So Let's say we want the scale to pop early and then hit zero with a speed something like this. So now that we've got the scale popping over life, let's take this emitter and make it into something uh, suitable for a shape burst. So we'll grab the emitter and we're going to keep it a point. Let's 
change the emission range to 360 and we'll get the emitter back to the middle. So from here, what do I want to do? Okay, I want to drop the birth rate and I want to set the initial number. Let's give it five points to begin with. So we get this now. And if you've seen the post I made a while back about doing confetti bursts, um, this might look familiar. So from here, what we want to do to, um, we want them moving at a, at a good speed to get some distance, but we don't want them shooting off the screen. So I'm going to boost this speed to 2,000. And we'll come to the emitter and we'll grab the simulation behavior drag. And we'll just play through and find a good value to pull them in. Let's try three and a half. Okay, there we go, something like that. So that's pretty much the starting point for getting a shape burst that pops scale. And you can come into the scale over life, back to behaviors, come into scale over life and adjust things. So let's get that popping even earlier. Uh, you can grab the point and then just use this slider down here. Okay, something like that. So basically that's it for getting your particles to pop scale over life. So let's have a look at using the scale over life um, behavior with airbrush now. Okay, in this project I just have a line here. Just grab the line tool and draw a basic line from left to right. So grab the line, come to the inspector and for brush type choose airbrush and then come to advanced and turn on dynamics and click show to see the options here. So dynamics creates uh, dabs, it converts the path to a series of particles called dabs. If we increase the spacing you'll see that there. I recommend ripple training of course to really uh, learn the most you can about um, airbrushes and image brushes. In motion. So from here, uh, let's animate this line. Well, let's come to the advanced features. So you see that the life is set to a thousand right up. So let's drop that down to one. Okay, cool. Uh, emission range isn't that important. Speed, of course, we can adjust. To slow things down. Okay, so from here what we want to do then is let's animate the line to draw on. You could use the write on behavior or ramp behavior to do this, of course. I like to just keyframe. Alright, let's have something like this. So you see this kind of effect a lot in motion templates. Um, personally, I think it's really ugly, right? Because you get this dispersal here. It's nice up front, but really I think we can do better when we're doing something like this. And so what we're going to do is just use the same behaviors we used before. So let's just bump the width up to 20 for now. So we'll grab the line and we will grab, like we did before, particles, scale over life. And this time we want to swap things around. So we're going to have the birth at 100 and the death at something low, like 10%. Okay, so now we still get the tapering
And what we can do from here is add drag again. Choose effect sub objects and adjust that until you get a reverse taper so it starts to be thinner at the end. And I think that looks pretty much better than just having everything disperse out. Especially so if we grab a circle now instead. This is something you see often in uh, motion templates. So we'll come to the shape and set an outline, get rid of the fill. Right, so if we animate this to draw on, okay, something like that. Nice, and then we'll set this again to airbrush and turn on dynamics. Turn the speed down. So this is the kind of thing uh, we often see and it doesn't look great even when uh, you cut the speed down. So what we can do is we're just going to apply uh, our behaviors. Just going to copy and paste those on. So we can get something uh, more elegant like this. Okay, so that is pretty much it for this guide. So we looked at how to use scale over life with uh, emitters and airbrushes to do some cool things. I hope that's useful for you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking it out.